everyone. Hello. We hope we've given everyone who wants to join in enough time to be here with us today. Um, we wanted to make sure that those who can't get out to get into service um, because of this crazy weather here in Metro Detroit and the surrounding areas. We know a lot of other states around us are, are um, subjected to this snow and craziness as well. And I just read when I was clicking on um, Facebook Live that we are expecting another three to five inches here in Metro Detroit today. So we wanted to make sure again that you can get a word, a first word. So we're coming out of Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. On the first day of the week, when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul began talking to them, intending to leave the next day, and he prolonged his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered together, and there was a young man named Eutychus sitting on the windowsill, sinking into a deep sleep. And as Paul kept on talking, he was overcome by sleep, and he fell down from the third floor and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and fell upon him, and after embracing him, he said, Do not be troubled, for his life is in him. When he had gone back up and had broken the bread and eaten, he talked with them a long while until daybreak, and then he left. They took away the boy alive and were greatly comforted. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's our word for today. Amen. Amen. That's our word for today. Falling asleep in church. We do not want to fall asleep in church. Amen. We're talking about a man named Eutychus. And Eutychus was a man who Paul encountered during his third missionary journey. He was heading back to Jerusalem and only had one evening left to address the people in Troas. So he ended up going much longer than he usually would have gone. And he ended up preaching past midnight. Now, consider that this was a long day. Um, this was not just one church service or one message. They had been going um, kind of from place to place all around throughout that day. So it was a very long day. And again, now he's preaching his last message through midnight. But that should have told them how important this message was, how important it was to get this message out because he was leaving and he was not returning to that place for some time, if at all. And so he needed to get this word out. Now, Eutychus, whose name means fortunate, ends up falling asleep, and he didn't just fall asleep, he fell right out of a window. I mean, that is a deep sleep when you fall completely out of the window, falling asleep. Now, we know we've seen people with their rude selves fall asleep in church um, or other places where people are speaking, and we, we know it's a deep sleep when that head nods like that, when when you're sitting there and, and that head nods, that is a deep, deep sleep. Now imagine how hard he had to be sleeping to fall right out of the window. Now in this scripture, there's some symbolism. The scripture tells us that there were many lampstands or lamps, you can substitute that for lamps, in that upstairs room. Lamps are always a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Lampstands, lamps, lights, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So Eutychus not only falls asleep in a place where an important message is being relayed, an important message is being delivered, being spoken, but he is able to fall asleep in a place where the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling. Windows, there's symbolism there. Windows symbolize both blessings and understanding. So he falls asleep in a place where the Word is going forth, an important word is being delivered, the Holy Spirit is strongly present in that place, and now blessings are available and attainable. Understanding about this word is available and attainable, and he falls into a deep, deep sleep. The next symbol here is that he fell from a third story window. He fell from the third story. Three in scripture is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, or it's the number, I'm sorry, of the Holy Trinity. I'm messing up here. It's the number of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he falls asleep in a place where the word is going forth, where the spirit is dwelling, where understandings and blessings are available and attainable, and where the Holy Spirit, the triune Godhead himself, is represented. 
he doesn't just fall asleep, but he falls out the window to his death, it says. Falls to his death. Luke, who was a medical doctor and a witness to this event, says that Eutychus was dead. He, in fact, declared him dead. Paul stopped. He stopped preaching at that point. He threw himself on Eutychus, and Eutychus was resurrected. That's what the word is telling us here. After that, they went upstairs, they had another meal, and Paul, in all his boldness, and I love this, it just, it tickles me, he went right back to preaching and finished his message. He did not let someone falling out of a window to their death stop him from getting his message out. Amen? That should further tell us the importance of this message. We have to understand that this was the first century, and, and he was responsible for, for helping to build that church. And he was a strong representative of building the church. Amen. The church as we know it today was started back then. Amen. And so he had to get this message out. He was not going to shirk his responsibility because someone else chose to fall asleep. And we need to always remember that. We cannot let our responsibilities fall by the wayside because of the actions of someone else. Amen. Amen. The point of the scripture is to remind us of the dangers of falling asleep in church. Now, let's be clear. It is absolutely rude. It is absolutely childish to fall asleep in a church service. If you don't have some sort of medical condition, it's just ridiculous. And you can ask anyone who has ever preached a message in a church, given announcements and had to stand in front of the church, sat in the choir and sang their hearts out in church, and to see people out there dozing off is absolutely asinine. Again, it's childish, it's rude, it shows no manners whatsoever, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about something so much more serious than just taking a nap. Amen? We're talking about falling asleep, being in a state of unconsciousness. Amen? Finding yourself in a dead space and unable to recognize the importance of the Word of God being spoken directly to you. We're talking about being unable to sense the presence of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Having no, no sense of what's going on around you. No sense of the wisdom. No sense of the knowledge. No sense of the blessings. Amen. That God has placed in front of you. That's what we're talking about. None of us should ever, ever be in a place where there is a worship opportunity, an opportunity to grow in Christ, an opportunity to walk in God's purpose and the destiny that he has for us and make the choice to fall asleep or to allow the enemy to be powerful enough in our lives to put us to sleep. Because that's what happens in all of these situations. It means the enemy has a little victory. He has won a battle in your life. Amen? Because you've chosen to fall asleep. Whether at his command or at your own will, you've made the choice to fall asleep. We can't allow ourselves to fall prey or give in to temporary gratification over long-standing blessings and growth in Christ. The church is, is not just a place of Christian gathering. It's not this fraternity or sorority where we go and, and have cupcakes and eat donuts and drink coffee or now they've got the big coffee shops in there where you can gather like you're at Starbucks. It's not a place to go where you can just entertain other people. And if you're one who has a voice or, or some thespian talent, whatever the case may be, it's not a place to go and, and perform or give others entertainment. It's not a place where you don't do anything else through the week, so now this is your social club. That is not what the church is. And unfortunately, in a lot of places, physical buildings, we've allowed that to go forth. And that is never what God intended. Paul did not go through the things that he went through, being beaten, being boiled in oil, um, being tortured on many occasions. He didn't go through those things for us to sit and have tea and crumpets in church and look cute and have the biggest hats and the, the most beautiful suits and go and put on a fashion show. They didn't go through that for us to be in the state that we're in right now. Amen. The disciples didn't die the deaths that they died to be in the state that we are in in the church right now. 
We have an entire generation of young people who don't want to go to church, not because of any rebelliousness that's in their heart, but because of what they have seen from the generations that have preceded them. They have seen adultery taking place right there in the churches. They have seen so much tomfoolery and abuse of power in the churches. They've seen everything but the truth of the word of God go on in these churches. That's why they're turned off. It's not them. It's us. We're responsible. Amen. Because we, like Eutychus, fell asleep to our deaths in the church. And we've got to remedy that. Amen. The church is not a place where foolishness and antics are supposed to go on. The church as we know it is from the Greek word ecclesia. And that is defined as an assembly. Amen. It's an assembly or it means the called out ones. We're supposed to be different. I am a minister. I am a, an ordained preacher of the gospel for pushing 20 years at this point. Amen. I've been in this for a very long time. And, and don't get me wrong. Of course, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. I've said many, many times, my tongue is an absolute hot mess. It gets away from me and I have to grab hold of myself. So that's something that I've battled through the years. Amen. And so we have to understand that, that the church and the people in the church, yes, we do fall short, but we are called out ones. And we are supposed to be different. Amen. I have seen people who are proclaimed atheists that treat people better than those people who say that they are Christians, followers of Christ in the church. And that is not the way it is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be that way at all. I've seen people who said that they're agnostic, who have more morals than people who are supposed to be in the church. We have got to wake up. It's time for us to wake up and stop falling asleep, falling out windows falling to our death in the church, amen? Or the church as we know it will all but stop growing. And the Lord called us to be better than this, amen? It's not about the people in the building, amen? It's not about the building itself. It's about us collectively, not just individuals trying to stand out, but collectively, the collective church, you, me, all of us, we are called out Amen. For the purpose of Christ. Christ gave his very life so that we have a chance at victory. Amen. Amen. So we have an opportunity to thrive. We have an opportunity to live our best lives. Not just when we make it over. Amen. Amen. Not just the, the time that we had. Um, I had ancestors. Those people who are people of color who had ancestors who knew that they wouldn't get out of a place. Amen. They wouldn't get out of a, a place where they were... Um, enslaved and and they were tortured and they were abused they knew they wouldn't get out of that place so so they sang those songs i wonder when the lighthouse will shine on me swing low sweet chariot coming for to carry me home we are not in that space amen we're not in that dispensation anymore we are in a dispensation when that the lord came that we had may have life and life abundantly and it's not just those who are in the African-American community or African descendants. Amen. There's so many other groups, whether they want to admit it or not, they came from absolutely nothing and were treated lower than dogs. Amen. That had to endure some things that the, 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 um, the descendants of those groups do not have to face now. So we should not still be living in that dispensation living as if we're in that dispensation. We have to live in the here and now, and we have an opportunity at victory and happiness and joy, unspeakable joy. Amen? Christ did not come so that we could be lowly, so that we could just be making it. Amen? So that we can just get up and, and try to catch a breath every morning, drag ourselves out of bed. That's not what Christ came for. He came that we may have life and life abundantly. It's our choice. It's a choice. It's a conscious decision that we can make, that we have to make. We can choose to live in fear that every time we walk out of that door, something terrible can happen. We have to choose whether we're going to grasp life and live it for all it's worth or whether we're going to just sulk and again, just barely make it. Christ suffered. Amen. He endured tortures that none of us could ever endure. Amen? Amen? He was humiliated in ways that none of us would ever be able to stand. Amen? He 
had his beard pulled out of his pulled out of his face. He was scourged. He was beaten. He was challenged that after he was punched in his face and his face was covered, then he was challenged to tell who it was. He's our Christ. He could have told them who it was at any given time. He could have said at any given time, enough's enough. I'm done with this. But because he loved us so much, because he loved you, because he loved me and still does, he chose to endure the cross. He chose to walk down Calvary. He chose to carry his own cross, his own wood that they that they ended up um, hammering. The, we call them the nails, but they were the spikes through his wrists and through his ankles. Amen. He chose to be on that cross and allow his lungs to deflate and suffocate. That's what crucifixion is. That's what he allowed. He didn't do that for us to just be mediocre. He did that for us to be our greatest selves. And all we need to do is stay awake. Amen. All we need to do is stay awake and make sure that we don't fall asleep. The church is no place for sleeping. The enemy desires to sift us as wheat. The scripture tells us that. He desires to sift us as wheat. Or as wheat. I'm sorry. But the enemy, in all of his slovenliness and laziness, he would rather us do it ourselves. He would rather not have to expend that kind of energy, sifting us like wheat. He'd rather sit back and watch us do it ourselves. And we do it on a daily basis. Every time we make the choice to fornicate, Every time we make the choice to walk past someone who needs some help and we just dismiss them and say, get a job, we're sifting ourselves like wheat. Every time we make the choice to go down and make these ridiculous casinos richer and richer and richer and then gloss past the stories of people who have now been or are now addicted to gambling and take food off of their family's tables and steal or end up being killed in the elevators like we've, we've heard in the casinos down there, we sift ourselves. People say all the time, oh, gambling is not a sin. Okay, let me explain to you why real quick. And I can do another message on this. I've done other messages in the past. The bottom line is you're putting trust in a machine or in cards or in anything else that's man-made to bring you some immediate finance than putting your trust in Christ who already knows what you need before you know that you need it. That's why it's a sin. Because you're putting your, your faith in something man-made as opposed to something that God made. Amen? God made man. That's why it's sinful. Amen? So each time you get a, an opportunity to, to go down there and enjoy yourselves, which you think you're enjoying yourselves because you're going to pay now or pay later. Amen. Take a, a, a take a second thought about that. Just think about it for a second. You're sifting yourself like wheat. The enemy doesn't have to do it. Amen. Amen. And I can go on and on and on about the things that the enemy puts in front of you to allow yourself to sift yourself so that he doesn't have to do it. Amen. Don't allow ourselves, we can't allow ourselves to be fooled because he crouches like a lion ready to devour us. Amen? He has no mercy. We have to put our trust in the one who is all merciful. Amen? Who's all loving, who's all giving, who's all caring. We can't go about this life being complacent, thinking that, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be okay. I'll do what I want. I'll live how I want. When we relinquish our authority, and relinquish our blessings and choose to fall asleep, the enemy has won. He's already won. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 6, 9 through 10 says, How long wilt thou sleep or sluggard? I'm sorry, O oh sluggard. When will you rise out of your sleep? When will you come out of it? Amen? Eutychus, thank God, didn't stay dead. It says he didn't stay dead. He rose up. He got some nourishment in his body and he started listening to the message like he should have been listening to in the first place. Amen. And that's the beauty of serving an all merciful, all loving God. Because even though we fall because of our own actions, amen, even though we fall down, even though we stumble, even though we have fallen to our proverbial deaths in some, in some instances, 
He gives us the opportunity to be resurrected, to get some nourishment, that's some word, get some word back in us, and get on that right track again, listening to the message that he tried to get us to listen to in the first place. Amen? As long as we get up another morning, we have another chance to get it right. But we have to realize the importance of God's word and then know that if we would rather sleep, then we need to get out of the way. Amen? Amen? We need to get somewhere else and get out of the way so that we don't disrupt the blessings and the purpose of others and disrupt the work of the church. If we don't need, to, if we don't want to do it, then we need to just move. Amen? Move out of the way. Don't take up space, amen, that someone else needs. Because it's not enough to come here and go, go to church, hear a glimpse of a message, and then come plaster it on, on Facebook. Church flow. Amen? Your church flow for... Who cares? That means absolutely nothing if you don't go out and spread that word and get somebody else saved. Amen? Nobody cares about your church flow, your church hat, your church suit. None of it. Amen? Because it means nothing. You can fool the people on Facebook, on Twitter, on Tumblr, on WordPress, on Instagram, but you can't fool God. You can Snapchat something, and just as quickly as that Snapchat disappears is how quickly that mess means to, to the Lord. Amen? That's how quickly your name can disappear from the book of life. Don't play with God because he hasn't played with us. He's been genuine with us. He's been true to us. Amen? Amen. Always. And he always will. Amen? We just have to recognize the importance of his word. Amen? Recognize it. Colossians 2 9 says for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily we all have a function and if we fail to do our part it will delay the work of the church amen it'll delay the work of the church it's not going to stop it because every time we fail God already has somebody waiting to pick up that slack amen if I've said it one time I've said it a million times God's will is going to be done either through us or in spite of us. And if it's in spite of you, all you do is miss out. Allow yourself to be used by the Lord. Amen. And reap all the blessings that he has already stored up for you. We have to put our flesh under submission at all times. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is always going to be weak. Amen? The flesh is just what our spirit is wrapped in. So we have to allow our spirit to come forth. We have to command our spirit to come forth. And we do that by waking up. Amen? Recognizing that God has a purpose, a plan, and a destiny for us that was predestined before the foundations of the earth. Amen? And all we need to do is embrace it. Amen? We have to wake up. If you feel like you're getting drowsy, wake up. That means if you feel like you're losing it a little bit, if you're going off track, if you're kind of veering your own way, wake up. And the Lord is there through his Holy Spirit, ready, willing, and able to get us back on the right track. Amen? If you feel like you're hanging on the windowsill for dear life, amen, then just wake up, amen, and put your flesh under submission. Hold on to everything we can. Some of us will hold on to a relationship that is slovenly, no good for us, a situation where we're being abused physically, emotionally, spiritually, and we will hang on to that for our dear lives. We will hang on with everything that we have inside of us when it's no good for us, but we'll let go the word of God at the least sign of trouble. If God's real, then why is there so much going on in this world? If God's real, then why are babies dying? If God's real, then, then why did this other team win the Super Bowl? It can be anything that we're ready, willing, and able to let go of God. But we'll hang on to the foolishness of this world for dear life. When it can't do anything for us, we have to wake up. Because our very lives are, in fact, in the balance. Our lives, our purpose that God planned for us is in the balance. Our destinies are in the balance. Don't lose it. Amen? Don't lose that because you need to take a little nap. See how simple that sounds? You lose your entire destiny because you want to take a little nap. 
because, oh, I've been in church all my life. And I still don't have the money to do this and that and the other. So I'm going to go over here. I've been in church all my life and, and Sister Sarah is still not speaking to me. I've been in church all my life and people are still talking about me. It is what it is. My grandma used to say when they stop talking about you, then you worry. Amen. As long as they're talking about you, you're doing something to be talked about. Amen. Just make it a positive thing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't lose all that God has for you because you need to take a nap. Because you want to fall asleep. Because just like Eutychus, it could very well result in your spiritual death. Amen. We've laughed about some things, but it's very, very serious. If you feel like you've lost your way, there's always an opportunity to come back. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. And, and if you feel like you need to come to the Lord or come back to the Lord. Amen. There's always that chance, amen, that you can come back and rededicate yourselves to the Lord. So let's bow our heads and just say a little prayer and ask the Lord to refresh us, to rejuvenate us, so we can get back up on that windowsill and back into that place, amen, where the triune Godhead is dwelling, where the Holy Spirit is dwelling, and where the Word is going forth for us individually and collectively in our lives, amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you give thanks praise heavenly father we worship you lord jesus christ we say hallelujah to you father god for all that you've done for us lord god all that you're doing for us right now heavenly father and all that you're waiting to manifest in our lives heavenly father we thank you lord jesus christ for another chance to hear your word we thank you for this kind of technology heavenly father that when technology is used the right way heavenly father it can certainly edify us and not tear us down lord god we thank you lord jesus christ that we know that you're here with us that you've always been here with us and you've got a plan for us heavenly father we thank you lord jesus christ for the opportunity of forgiveness heavenly father and we do ask you now right now lord god in the order of prayer that you forgive us of all of our sins of omission and all of our sins of commission, Lord God. Those things that we did and failed to do that we didn't know about and those things that we consciously have done or failed to do, Lord. We ask you to forgive us, Heavenly Father. Wash us once again white as snow and cover us in the blood, Heavenly Father. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus to touch all of those who need you, Heavenly Father, and we know that that's all of us, Lord. We ask you, Father God, to refresh us, to rejuvenate us, Lord, to put us back on the right track if we have lost our way, Heavenly Father. We ask you to speak directly to us, Lord. We ask you to give us a home visitation, Heavenly Father, for those who need, Lord Jesus Christ, to be put back on the right path, Lord Jesus. We ask, Heavenly Father, that those that don't know you that may be tuning in right now or may watch this later, Lord God, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you save them, Lord Jesus Christ, that you let them know, Father God, that there is an opportunity at eternal life, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to lead those who may not have a church home to a real church, Heavenly Father, a real church home, Lord God, where the gospel is being preached and enacted, Heavenly Father. Not just where the preacher is talking at people, Lord God, but where he or she is living out the gospel, Lord Jesus Christ, and can be a strong example to those people who come in and are ready to serve you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are a God of the second, third, fourth, fifth, 25th chance, Lord Jesus Christ, that, Heavenly Father, we always have an opportunity to do better. Lord, because of your mercy and your grace. We thank you today for this word, Lord God. We ask that this just be the beginning, Heavenly Father, of this word going forth, Lord Jesus, that others remember it and go tell others, Heavenly Father, not to fall asleep, but to be awakened, Lord Jesus Christ, to be awakened by your word, to be awakened by your Holy Spirit, to be awakened by your triune Godhead. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are, all that you're doing today and always. In Jesus' name, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, and we say together, amen, amen.